Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I, good morning. I'm Clive Anderson, and I'm very uh, pleased to be here at this uh, fashionable time, a peak time for, for conference going. Uh, to, uh, <laughs> not. <laughs> it was my choice, <laughs> not, not my first choice. But uh, uh, so, and it's a joy and a pleasure to, uh, to be able to introduce to you, those who don't know him already, um, Ben uh, uh, Frau. Um, then I'm getting the name wrong already. No, Frau. Yeah, no, it's yeah, Frau, right. That's right. Good. So, this, is a, this is an, an yeah. annual thing. My, yeah, name, my ben, name wrong. But it's, it's an interesting name. name. You got it's my name right. At least Ben is easy. That's yes, the, yes. Yeah. Ben is fairly yeah. Easy. Yeah. <laughs> short. Ben, I just had a penny there. Ben, uh, ben Frau, is Frau, and uh, who is director of programmes at Channel Five, and of course, Channel Five is the, the channel of the year. So, so a round year, of applause. Yeah. At last. Yes. So it's a joy to be introducing Ben to a gathering of serious-minded broadcasting professionals. Almost makes up for ITV turning me down for Love Island. <laughs> in fact, when I was first asked to do this, I thought uh, Channel 5 wanted me to replace Stormy Daniels in the uh, Big Brother house. Uh, You'd but they, have been cheaper. Yeah, well, <laughs> You'd have been cheaper. But you went with Hardeep Singh Kohli instead. So <laughs> Who's being advertised as being in Edinburgh this week, so I'm not quite sure what's going on there. I, saw, I bumped into him about <laughs> ten days ago, and he was in a hurry to get on to do his stand-up act. He didn't mention, it's I'm about to abandon it. In Edinburgh <laughs> after all. Yeah, 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 I don't know when you got on to him. Anyway, so it's a, it's a joy to be here in uh, this, this uh, lovely, uh, spacey room. Uh, not that you hear the words lovely and spacey put together <laughs> so much these days, but I'm trying to work out what I should be using. My... Um, He's going to be funnier than me, isn't he? It's like, <laughs> no, I, 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 I'm just going to concede now. Should I be using my legal skills in, in cross-examining well, you? I think your, your mission here is to probe and prod and try and... Um, <laughs> I mean, if we can get my head of press slightly uncomfortable, yes. that would be quite an achievement because yeah. we, don't want to be, we don't want to be too homogenised and boring no. and predictable. Well, I do, but we also don't want to get ourselves into trouble. No, but in fact, what, what I was uh, sort of leading to say is that I think uh, in a sort of courtroom situation, there's two sides. There's cross-examination mm. and there's the examination in chief. And I am be the examination in chief yes. to bring out all the, yes. you know, the, the good things you want to say. Okay. But there will be cross-examination because members ah, of the audience can uh, okay. do questions. But we, we'd like you to do it uh, via the festival app uh, so we've which may not work well it's no the screen here uh, we people are some already posing questions that are hard questions are at the end okay, uh, so but I'll be just being uh, nice as pie okay, because fine, right. in court I used to you know cross examine and you know, you know wicked people dodgy okay. um, officers uh, criminals yes. and then I moved into telly and broadcasting generally and got to interview you, you know uh, Jimmy Savile uh, <laughs> Rolf Harris uh, Jeffrey Archer <laughs> Gary Glitch. it was a different different world but uh, you, you, now Channel, Channel 5, we can, we can certainly celebrate uh, Channel 5 because it's now very high standing with, with critics, with you know, award winners and yeah. so forth. And uh, this is you at the helm for, what, about five years? Five and a half years. So yeah. what, have, what have you done to Im improve things or to, to bring it to this wonderful state? Well, when I inherited it five and a half years ago, it was still very much an acquisitions heavy channel. You know, we had CSI, NCIS, uh, persons of interest, all, you know, all generally playing in peak across the week. Um, and of course, you know, and, and then half the year would be Big Brother and half the year would be American acquisitions. Positions. And I felt very, very strongly that really the way to get a, a, a reputation and the way to give a channel an identity uh, in those days before, it, uh, before brands all died was about um, origination. Mm. So sort of over the years, we've, we've shifted a huge amount of our money from acquisitions to commissioning. Uh, we now have a almost fully commissioned peak time schedule. Uh, we've roged into all genres and uh, uh, at the end of this year we finally move into a uh, scripted drama for the first time in years and years and years. Um, we have you know, specialist factual history, lifestyle features, documentary, etc, etc. And um, we've brought faces to the channel. And I do think that you know, it's been a slow process because you didn't want to ab abandon the audience. You didn't want to shock the audience into alien... Um, feeling alienated and that this channel that they loved so much has suddenly changed uh, dra dramatically. Um, and I think it's been a, a sort of educating process for them where they've come on the journey, we've retained our viewers, but we've also brought in a lot of new viewers. All right, we're going we're gonna to show something because you do a whole range of programmes yes, from, yeah. from Big Brother to Big Brother bit on the side, but yes. uh, and a whole range and a, of... And a whole load of other whole lot, We're going to see. Big Brother in the time. No, and we've got a whole lot of uh, programmes okay. uh, to, to, to show real now, to okay. remind people of the, the range that the you range. bring to the screen. Very good word. I'm queuing that now, I yes. hope. Okay. Pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, good. Bre 
uh, breathtaking uh, to pick I up a word. I, actually, when I watch that, I think it's yeah. pretty breathtaking. But I, I suppose I have to use the F word as well, the, the finance. Yeah. Uh, your, your budgets are you know, well below yes, uh, are, your yeah. rivals. Yeah. So if you if take you as the fifth of the five yes. terrestrial channels. Though, of course, when Channel 5 came along, it, it wasn't the fifth channel anymore because there are already lots and lots of other uh, yeah. channels. So how do, how do you make your programmes on the money? How do you get the audience to come to you rather than the 500 other, you know, Dave, Dave, Deja Vu? Well, I think the first thing you've got to do is you've got to know your audience. I'm very, yeah. I'm very clear in my head about who the audience is, what they like, the subjects they're interested in. I mean, really what you get paid for is trying to uh, sort of uh, predict what they want to watch in nine months' time. And every single one of those programmes and all the other programmes we have, I could tell you point and purpose of why we commissioned them and why I believe they should be on our channel and why our channel should be doing them. And some of them are for ratings, some of them are for reputation, some of them are to bring an audience from a different channel to uh, uh, showcase the Channel 5 portfolio. Uh, so they all have a point and purpose. And then when it comes to budgets, it's really, you know, I was taught at Channel 4 when I was there, uh, it's not all about money. Mm. And I'll never say no to a project because I can't afford it, because if I really want it, I can afford it. Yes. It just means that I might not be able to do as much as I would like to do across the schedule. Right. You know, the money's the money's the money. Um, and great shows like, you know, GPs Behind Closed Doors and the Yorkshire Vet, shows that we can commission in volume, mean that we can get a slight reduction on price, which frees up a little bit of money to make more expensive mm. programmes. But I have programmes in the schedules that are, you know, a quarter of a million pounds an episode. Mm. Uh, our, our tariff, our, our, our sort of simplistic price is 80,000 80, at 8 o'clock and 100,000 at, at, at 9 o'clock. Nobody ever makes me a programme, really, for 100,000 at, at 9 o'clock, because it's almost impossible to do nowadays. They're all sort of 110, 120, 130. Mm -hmm. And I do think that one of the things we're probably going to be doing going forward is re-looking at how much we spend on programmes, because five years on, you can't just keep the same prices. Mm -hmm. uh, we've achieved what we've achieved by doing really good work, working with really committed independents who, you know, uh, really go the extra mile for us. Mm -hmm. And I think that if we want to continue to grow, we need to invest more in programs. So do you, and you, spend more. Do you really enjoy your job? I get a feeling from you, you like it, because not, not everybody like wants to do the, the sort of thing that commissioners and controllers you do, see, which is the, turning a lot of things down, yeah. worrying about money, having yes. to think. think. Well, Some I people just like making programs. I don't worry about the money, I let somebody no. else worry about the yeah. money. And I just go, um, I'm going to spend the money. But when you started in. <laughs> and then they come and go, well, you haven't really got any money. Yeah. And I go, oh, I've spent it already, so you just have to find someone. And actually, yeah. in, you know, in fairness to Viacom, you know, we had a bit of a sort of thing at the beginning of the year where sort of, you know, I'd, I'd sort of spent a lot of money. Yeah. And then I just went and spent some more money. And they went and found a little bit more money <laughs> to, uh, to pay back the money I'd spent. Well, so, so you've, you've got a, a, sort of a, a boss company above you. Yeah. And I think you were appointed originally by Richard Desmond when, yeah. when he owned it. Yeah. Uh, you'd worked at Channel 5 before that. Yes, when I got five, RTL yeah. or, or yes. whatever. Yeah. But, but you, have, you, know, you have worked with different, yeah. completely different kind of bosses. So yes. there's the, are, are you always... You're looking over your shoulder or above your head or wherever you would locate. No, I think I think that I think that one of the things about the the, the people that when they employ me, they, they you know I'm very clear about what my responsibilities are. I work very hard. I'm quite conscientious, and uh, they know that I'm not going to just go off and go rogue. Mm. Um, so we're all clear on our targets. We're all clear about the aim and ambition. And I see the thing I love about the job is is choosing from the commissioners you know, which are the projects that really excite me. Looking at a schedule across the year and going, what is the texture of the schedule? What is the balance? What are the pieces that excite us? What are the pragmatic pieces? What are the returnable hits? What are the pieces that could change our perception? What are the pieces that we could present in or schedule in a different way that would make people look at us with new eyes? I th you know, what is the talent that we could attract? Could we possibly get that person? If we got that person, what could we possibly do with it? Mm. And it's all sort of, it's all down there. It's all, it's all creativity, whether it's whether it's sort of scheduling or program titles or um, you know the week to press, whatever it is, or how we how we market our programs, it's all about selling, creating a product and selling a product. Is I it? Think that but is so it, exciting? Is it art or a science? You know, can you work it I, out or is it instinct? Well, I, it's interesting. I was I was at a once to watch session a, a couple of days ago, and, and somebody asked the question about uh, how uh, Netflix and Amazon apparently are commissioning a lot of their programs through analytics. Mm. Um, and I said, all I would say to that is that Hillary Clinton ran her campaign on analytics, and where did she yeah. end up? Whereas so Donald you're Trump, more of a Donald Trump man. Well, that's I think what you're I, saying. I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think you have to listen to people. I mean, yes. I, I think research is very interesting yes. and, I, and it obviously gives me a daily update on how we're performing and whether I made the right decision or whether we scheduled that programme at the right place. You know, we get the ratings every day. Yes. But I, 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 I would never deny my gut instinct. And as I don't really know how television works, yes. I'd have never really 
had to do like proper television work, like be a producer or a director or anything like that. Um, my gut is all I have to Hang tell on, you. Hang on, can we note that down? You've no, no idea no, how I I television mean, works. No, I mean, when my, yeah. when my commissioners give me a programme, I go, it's been picture locked. I don't really know what that means. Or, it's, you know, it's, it's, in the, <laughs> it's in the fine cut or the whatever. I mean, cut. I mean, I don't know the... Pro if you it, gave me... I mean, you've, it means somebody's had to cut and paste different uh, channel names at the top in the submission. That's, uh, yeah, yeah, I, mean, I think. <laughs> it, it's, 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 that's not my job. No. Just as well, because really, no. otherwise we would okay. have no programmes. Right. So, uh, so I'm very much rely on my gut, and and you know it's all about read, reading the room, reading the atmosphere, looking at the papers, hearing people talking. Just you know, there's something in the atmosphere that you can pick up, and you sort of get to, you just steer about where you should be going, what you should be doing, what you should stop doing. All right. Well, we've got. Um uh, we've, got a f we've got a film we've made. I, I know you haven't seen it, but you know... I haven't seen it, It's no. me and my, I did, me and my Channel 5. Me and my Channel I did, Rather I, than me and my I did give everyone permission to be truthful. I'm interested yes. to hear what they say. Well, they're, they're, they work under you, so... They let's, work they, under me. So, or they hope to continue doing they that, I suppose. They hope to continue so I don't to do that. Let's, <laughs> let, let's see what they have to say. Okay, so let's, let's, let's have a so look this, at this. So the point of this was yeah. to try... Because this is all about you. This is not really about me. This is about you trying to get a better understanding about what it's like to work with me, uh, the things that are important to us, um, the relationship that we have with each other in the channel, some of the challenges that we face, because this session is, the whole point of purpose of this is about people out there in the audience, you know, how can you work with us better? How can you give us the projects that we're looking for? How can we get a commission? How can you get a commission? Thinking. Absolutely. That's, that's why they're all here. So yeah. <laughs> we're, we're hoping to be insightful a little bit. Yes, so, so it's all about you and your team. So, it's, uh, team, yeah. so, so we'll, we'll, Let's see. we'll all be self-explanatory. Mm. So, so me and my channel five. Mm. <laughs> well, Fair. was that um, was that illuminating for you? Was it therapeutic? I think it was therapeutic. It, it, it is, uh, I, yeah. think it, I think it's a lot of that was very fair. Uh, um, I think everyone did a very good job. You all did a very good job. You all look gorgeous. That lens is fantastic. I'd like to live my life through that lens. <laughs> um, that would uh, save me dying. Chairman Frau, though. Chairman Frau. Well, I, 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 no, I am that, quite dictatorial. Yeah. And I, yeah. you know, some people would criticise me for um, being, not, controlling is not the right word, but, you know, being at the, at the sort of top of the tree when it comes to the creativity. But I, I don't think you can... I don't think we could have achieved what we've achieved if we'd all done it by committee. Mm. You know, I don't think you can have a vision for a channel and drive a channel through um, if you've got to, you know, have ten people around the table putting their tuppence worth in. And so I, I know I can be dictatorial, I know I can be dogmatic, I know that I am um, not easy to work with, but I'm also crystal clear crystal clear about where I want to go yeah. and sometimes the commissioners hate it. I'm crystal clear about why we shouldn't do something and I'm crystal clear about how we should do something and they might want to do it a certain way. I go, no, that's not the way to do it. This is the way to do it and that's the bit that makes it a Channel 5 programme. Right. And um, I think at the same time as that can be challenging and um, emotionally uh, challenging, particularly for, for some of the people around me, I think also it gives a clarity we can make very quick decisions. Um, we, we spend, you know, only on certain, certain complicated shows do we spend a lot of time discussing, mm. discussing things. Um, we make quick decisions, we move forward. I completely trust the team editorially to deliver. My job is to pick the programmes, set the tone, be clear with them about the point and purpose of that programme, whether it's a hit show or solving a problem on a Friday night or um, a foundation piece for Saturday evenings or uh, to attract young people at 10 o'clock or whatever, and then I hand it over. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's talking of being over things. Is there something you're over in terms of um, well, styles you know, of programmes? Well, I think I'm, I'm over quite a lot of things um, yeah. a, a lot of the time. It's a bit like, I remember when I was young, eating fries, Turkish delight, and I loved it, and then I was really over it, and I've yeah. never eaten it since. Yes. Um, and, you know, you just kind of have... That's, that's a useful, I don't know, analogy or metaphor, but, well, but what programmes... Well, uh, uh, are, about, are you over? What well, should we well, not be pitching well, to what, what, you? I speak well, on behalf of what the I've already got a lot of. Mm. Um, because what happens at Channel 5, because of our limitations, we tend to, f when we find success, we really milk that success. Yeah. So when we knew that dogs worked, we got a lot of dog programs. <laughs> now there comes a point where one more dog program, and I'm over dogs. Yes. And then suddenly it's like dogs are dead. Yeah. Now we've got a lot of railway programs. <laughs> Well, I don't, and I love all my railway programs. Yes. We've got big railway programs and small railway yes. programs, medium railway programs and funny yeah. railway programs and technical railway programs, and I just don't want any more railway programs. Yes. Because if I become over railways, yeah. I've got a very empty schedule. No dogs, no rails again. So I don't yeah. really want more of yeah. what I've got. No, okay. Because I think we're all bright enough, clever enough, and uh, smart enough to look at something that works and go, we can spin that off there, or we could spin that off there, or we could do this. What we really need is the things that we haven't thought of. Yeah. And I think our biggest challenge is that, you know, we're very close to the schedule, we're very close to um, budget round, we're always talking about 
what's in front of us. And where we really need the independent companies' uh, help is in taking that step back and looking at the wider world, going, you know, there's that whole area there that you haven't roped into. Or did you notice that subject worked really well five years ago? And if you were to bring you go, wow, you know what? I never saw it there. It's right yeah. under my nose, but I can't see it. Yeah. So I've said before that we're, we're not really about completely reinventing the wheel. Mm. There are no new ideas. There yeah. are only uh, new ways of doing old ideas. Um, what those ideas are. They're all out there. You yeah. just need help in spotting what those ideas are. All right. Well, to extend the Donald Trump analogy, I want to just ask one difficult question. Think of me as Robert Mueller light Ooh. is in that regard. Yes. Uh, but uh, so you talk about a blip or uh, problems. Uh, 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 viewing figures. Is that, is that a well, this problem? Is, this has been a very challenging year. Yeah. I mean, we, had a, we had a week of Big Brother in January. And then, uh, I, I mean, I think World Cup. I mean, I'm really over World Cup. Yeah. Really over Love Island. <laughs> there are two things I'm really over. And, um, and it has been a challenging year. And it's quite interesting, I think, uh, you know, uh, I think it was Craig who mentioned about creative renewal. Mm. And it, it's a phrase that I heard mentioned uh, a few years ago, we're in creative renewal. And it sounds, oh, we're in creative renewal. And you see sort of nymphs and garlands <laughs> and we're all dancing around being creative and renewing <laughs> and everything. And actually, it's a bit more like warfare. You're in the trenches, you say, Jesus Christ, will anything stick? Yeah. Jesus Christ, is there anything out there that can get us a rating? Is there, how are we going to rebuild the schedule? Because as was said in the tape, a lot of our very successful shows have started to decline, which is life. Yeah. And uh, my job is to keep us up there and the targets keep growing and growing and growing. But you can't just keep growing. You have to free up the schedule. You have to open it up to try new ideas. You have to find and test the water for what might work in the future. Mm. If you look at what we were doing five years ago tonally, we are completely different now. We've had about uh, sort of three different tones across the channel. Mm. So the, the creative renewal that we're in is, is, is driven by two things. One, a very tough year. Two, um, the market in general, you know, advertising markets down, the rise of the fangs, all that kind of thing. And three for us, uh, the, the, the sort of the, the slight decline in established series. Mm. Part of me is really excited about it because it's all about where are we going to go next? Mm. Who will we be in two years' time? What will the schedule look like in three years' time? Uh, where can we go? Wh how are we going to get there? And the other half of me is crapping my pants because mm. I've still got the targets and I've still got Viacom to please and I've still got the bosses yes. and I still have my, my responsibility which is to put bums on seats and deliver the numbers. If you're, if you're crapping your pants, culottes might be a handy thing to be wearing. I don't, you know, change your mind. <laughs> Maybe I'm not over culottes. <laughs> what, uh, what about sort of long running schedule, like things like Big Brother? Is there, is there a, a con there comes a point when you have to stop something like that. Is, well, that, I, is that imminent? Well, you, I, I, well my, 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 my position on Big Brother is, is clear and I have planned for a year without Big Brother. Yes. I mean, never say never because uh, the world is constantly changing and I think it would be irresponsible to not keep all options open. But at the moment, I'm planning for a year without Big Brother. Which will be, just just will a year or is that, be... that going to be forever, would you say? Or? Well, the contract runs out at, at Christmas. Yes. So it would be for as long right. as I decide not to have Big Brother. Okay. Now, do you say, do, were people talking about how hard their jobs were at... Uh, it, it, would, would you say you have the hardest job? No, I don't have the hardest job. I no. have one of the easiest jobs. Right. The easiest job? Well, I think you have the easiest job in that you, ha you surround yourself with people who bring you higher. And, uh, you know, I... I I suppose the bad part of the job is that I'm ultimately responsible for it, but that's, I, I don't mind that at all. I think it's easier for one person to be responsible. Yeah. I think my job is a fantastic job because what I have is the vision yeah. and I have the delight of working with fantastic people and talking about ideas and getting excited about projects. Um, I don't have to work out the detail of the money. Mm. Poor Nan has to do that. I don't have to work out uh, the, you know, the, the long-term strategy of the schedule in terms of the detail and the amortization and how many repeats we can play and what's playing on the digital channels and how much budget is left and can we really afford that and does that come out of that pot or that pot or that pot. I don't have to sit in the edit suite. No or um, you know, plough through thousands of emails, you know, trying to find the, you know, the, the, the jewels that are in, in the hay or whatever. So in a way, I think I have one of the easiest jobs. It is probably the most pressured job, but I think we're all under pressure. Yeah. Well, it, it, it is a very small team. Yeah. And, and, um, and I think part of our success is that we, we do make quick decisions. We do work collaboratively. We do care about each other. We have a lot of fun. Yeah. Even in the darkest days, we have a lot of fun yeah. because we do work in television and we're incredibly privileged people. So your job, perhaps not the easiest job, uh, I'd push you off that, but perhaps the most fun job because you're taking the big decisions. It's a fantastic yeah. job. I mean, I can, yeah. I can do anything I want. Yes. So everyone in this room is thinking, you yeah, know, I'd like his job. Yeah. So, so that's, I don't know if that's a challenge to you or? <laughs> well, I won't be in the job forever. <laughs> OK, have you got a, a time limit? No, 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 but I mean, you know, I, in fact, I was told uh, by my boss at Channel 4, three and a half years, and I've been five and a half years, and I think there will come a, there will come a time yeah, where yeah. I go, you know, I've done the job. Yeah. 
But as long as that thing in my stomach is churning and I'm going, oh my God, that's an exciting idea. And it is, you know, you can have those weeks, those, you know, days where you're just going, oh, this is really hard. Then someone comes in and goes, I've been thinking about, and you go, oh, there you go again. What, what? Another exciting idea. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to have to see that through. <laughs> well, here's a, uh, <laughs> let's see if this is an exciting idea, because let's look at some of the programs okay. coming up. Okay. Uh, and uh, one we've got ready in a, in a clip form is Undercover Girlfriends. Okay. So <laughs> do, do you just want to explain that before we see <clears throat> the clip? Or? Okay. Yeah. So one of the things uh, that I like to do is, well, I have two things that, that's important. One is I have an open door policy, um, and I've always said that anybody can always get a meeting with me. You won't get it immediately, but... One day a month, I clear my diary, and it is for people who I've never met before to come in right. and spend half an hour, three quarters of an hour with me and find out about the channel and ask me things, you know, it, uh, because I think it's really important that we spend time with new companies. Um, the second thing I like to do is I like to go and brainstorm. Um, ideas are the fundamental and the foundation piece of, of, of everything that we do. And um, while it's great that people come in with ideas, I also like to spend time with creative people mm. um, brainstorming ideas. So this idea came out of a brainstorm that I went to with 2.4. It's been a very nice afternoon looking at a, a number of different projects. Um, I think it was a title, I'm not sure, Mel, Mel can possibly correct me, but I think uh, within two seconds the concept was uh, a group of lads go on holiday <coughs> not knowing that their girlfriends are going with them to watch what they do. And immediately, oh, oh I love the idea, one of the girlfriends is the air stewardess and another girlfriend is checking them in and another girlfriend is giving them a massage and they don't know. Oh. And then at the end of each episode, the girls ring from Manchester, even though they're in the next villa, and go, how was your day today, boys? But they know the truth. And I just thought, I love that idea. Okay. Strip it across a week. It was a very simple context. Yeah. And so we said, we'll do that show. Right. Sebastian, um, Commissioner Sebastian Cardwell, looked after it. And, uh, and I think we're playing, is it next week we're playing across the week, 10 o'clock? Next week at 10 o'clock, somebody else goes, yes we are. Yeah. Uh, after Celebrity Big Brother, it's really fun, well, it's feel good. This is a bit of it. Let's, let's have a, a clip of it to get a, a flavour. Well, it's a fun watch, but is it fun for the participants? Aren't you destroying, <laughs> destroying relationships better she for our entertainment? Better she finds out now than in five years' time. He's, <laughs> one of those men is a real rat. Yes. Real rat. So it's, yeah. it's, he so does, it's public service yeah, I, broadcast. It's public service yeah, broadcast, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're all about making people's lives better. There's a little bit of pain for a lot of games You're, that it, girl. It's, pe it's pest control. It's <laughs> yeah, he's, he's that, one of those guys is a real pest. Yeah. No, I mean, there are, there are, I mean, there's some fantastic moments in it. Yeah. But, it, but generally, it's a fun programme. Yeah. Uh, except for one of the men is a really bad piece of work. So we do this poor girl a, a great favour. So do you have a psychologist, psychiatrist, no. social workers? No. <laughs> get a, they just get a lovely holiday. I, they may be psychologists, I can't remember. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's hope they were psychologists if we need a psychologist. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but one of, the, and one of the things about that kind of show is, you know, this big quest for 16 to 34, so it's like, you know, what do they want? Yeah. You know, how do they want to watch it? So it'll be interesting to see that how that performs after something yeah. like Celebrity Big Brother. Uh, it's part of our creative. It's in the new Big thing. Brother Love Island sort of era, isn't it? It's got bikinis, young, it's got bikinis and, and water in it. Yes. Yeah. Looking yeah. good. Yeah. But emotional highs and lows and uh, yes. and uh, infidelities and so. Yeah. Talking of which, what, what happened with uh, Stormy Daniels? Uh, were you, she was in. She was in for Big Brother. We were she was in for Big Brother. We built a whole week around Stormy. Um, what did you I, say? To I, her I, I, well, I wrote her a really nice letter actually because <laughs> um, we'd heard that there was all kinds of potential issues with immigration. I flew somebody out, over to accompany her in. Uh, you know, I actually, you know, really contributed a lot to her participating. Yes. Uh, and we filmed the VT, which people would have seen, and then she decided not to participate and sort of disappeared on us. That she's called Stormy for a reason. She's yes. stormed off. Yeah, I was a little, I was a little miffed. I, I was bloody furious, actually. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I was more than lifted. I was bloody furious. Yeah. Uh, because we built the whole goddamn show. We built the White House. <laughs> um, Kirsty Alley actually ended up being a much better first lady. Yes. Um, uh, then I was very pissed that she was on ITV, and then I decided to just get over it and move on. The one thing about Big Brother and those kind of big juggernaut shows is that you don't have time to linger in the moment. You've just got to deal with the next thing and deal with the next thing. Yeah. So it, she, the storm came yeah. and the storm went. But I, it's, it's a little bit like, uh, you know, undercover girlfriends. You're in, in, in the Big Brother house, I was mugging up on this last night. So, so you're, you're looking for things to happen. You've got to have people cheating on somebody outside or flirting in a way, inappropriately. Yes. You've got to expect people to misbehave, otherwise there's no show. Yes, it? you do. But, but I think part of the change that we've made over the last few years is, is, is that sort of that uncomfortable feeling that you would get from some of those shows. Even in the, 
even in the, uh, the, the scene in, in this show where the man is exposed, he, he's just a bad man. Mm. Um, and it is emotional and the girl is upset, but there is, it's not, it's, it doesn't make you feel uncomfortable. Okay. It's like, thank goodness she's seen this. And it's exactly as, yeah. her fears have been proven. It's yeah. what she wanted to find out by going on the holiday. And it doesn't give you that, um, that sort of taste in your mouth where you feel slightly, um, a slightly distasteful taste in your mouth. Mm. And I think that that's one of the things I'm very mindful of. I do think Brexit and Trump and the world at the moment is a very dark place. And I think that our schedule is trying to be a much more positive place. And I think shows like Rich House, Poor House and Cruising and Yorkshire Vet and um, even if we're doing this wonderful uh, a series with single mothers in Liverpool, uh, which is basically a celebration of a, of a man-free life. Um, it is looking at working class people, but with real positivity and joy, mm. as opposed to sort of in a slightly sort of salacious way. Yeah. And I think that change of tone is, is, is really important. Or an another change of tone, a different programme from, you've got, a, you've got a rat, as you're calling him, in, uh, in uh, you know, Undercover Girlfriends, mm. but you've got famously one of the nicest people in show business mm. uh, presenting a programme for him. Michael Palin. Michael so Palin. how do you manage to get him? Is that well, I didn't. Did he, you didn't. Well, no, I famously don't like meeting people, so I, you know, I'm, I'm hopeless. Well, well, well having a nice but, time here. Meeting, yeah, no, I don't mean doing this, this kind of thing. Yeah. You know, I would be far too embarrassed to go. No, no. Uh, yeah. So uh, we we talked about. Uh, North Korea about three years ago. This has been the, the, probably the longest yeah. program in gestation yeah. because we commissioned it about three years ago. It was yeah. originally called Let's All Go to North Korea. And then suddenly it became a whole different ballgame. It was like Michael Payne might do it. It's like, oh, well, now you're taking it to a new level. Yeah. Um, and well, how do you get him? Because he's well you know, identified with BBC programmes. He's, he's been everywhere in the world, possibly except North Korea, with the BBC. I think you've the except stuck North, in for well, the I think, I think except North Korea was a very exciting prospect. Yeah, for yeah. Um, it, absolutely charming. He's loved the experience. It's a fantastic series. And I think to have Michael Payne on, the, on, the, on Channel 5 is a real endorsement of where we've come. Yeah. We have some amazing talent on the channel now. Well, let's just look at Michael Palin, because we've got a clip of that. Let's have so a look just, at it. Yeah. I quite like yeah. the way they walk. Yes, yeah. You do with a bit more of that in Channel 5. Yes. A bit more discipline, I think. Well, people should uh, well, report for duty. I, I thought they looked very professional. Yes. Yes, I quite like that. <laughs> very groomed and very professional. Yes, and in proper skirts, not, in not proper culottes. Skirts, not culottes, yes. absolutely right, yeah. So, yeah. so, so that's, a, that's a reasonably expensive programme to make, uh, getting Michael Palin sure and sending was. him around the world. Do you know why I don't know how much it costs? No. Well, I'm not going to press you on it, but <laughs> so use that and, you know, drama. That's another area where you've yes, got to spend I, money. Yes, but I think about drama, and I, you know, I'm so glad that we finally got drama. We announced um, Cold Call yesterday with uh, Sally Lindsay. Uh, the initiative about drama is, you know, you can't compete with the Netflixes at £10 million an hour. How can we be different? And it's always been my philosophy in life. If, the, if you can't, in a way, if you can't be the best, you've got to turn left and do something different. Um, so our sort of initiative is to do lower cost drama mm. and utilise new writers, new directors, work with new companies. Mm. Um, don't pay them so much. And, well, you, yes, you could say you don't pay them well, much, I'm, I'm but just, really the yeah. creative challenge is how yeah. do you do drama for less? Or is it with fewer, you know, big shots, fewer, fewer extras, well, uh, locations which are handier rather than... I'd rather not know what the compromises might be. Indeed, if yeah. there have to be compromises, my attitude is, and what I say to the drama people is that I don't want, to, I don't want you to say, oh, we can just shoot it in one location, because yeah. that sounds to me like you've compromised. What I want you to say is, great, we will go away and make you a great drama. I, sh as a viewer, shouldn't notice where any compromises have been made. And I think, it's in a way, it's a reflection of us being a, a smaller channel and having less money. We have to think more carefully about what we do and how we do it and um, uh, how long we spend filming and, I suppose, how big the teams might be. I don't think that we necessarily compromise any of our work. What we do is try and find creative ways to bring, bring these projects to air. And I expect the same from the drama people. And I think when you're meeting people like Kay Mellor and Nicholas Schindler, you know, who, who make really expensive drama and who are very successful drama people, and they are excited at the prospect of doing drama for a quarter of a million pounds an hour, mm. that indicates to me that we've, we've ignited something. Certainly when we set out the initiative, we were overwhelmed by people, excited by the thought of, creatively having to look at drama in a new way, which is what I'm trying to initiate, as opposed to make me a cheap version of whatever. That doesn't interest me in the slightest. OK. Now, I'm, I'm just uh, speaking out loud to uh, my, my producer here, because we've got a couple more clips we could play, but I, we might be running out of time. 
All right. Um, so, so, uh, so, so, so sa Saturday evening entertainment shows. You've got um, uh, blind so date. This time last year, we yes. So, so this time, I mean, this, this is again the evolution, evolution of the channel. This time last year, we launched sort of blind date for the first time. So we now we, there was a Saturday strategy. We've added Gino to the list. Uh, we had the Chuckle Brothers, rest in peace, poor Barry. Mm. Um, and uh, next year we will rogue into Sunday nights. Yes. Um, there's always you know, and as soon as we've cracked Saturday and Sunday, yeah. Monday will no doubt collapse. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll have to go but back to Monday. You know, but I've these are big competitive areas, so, you know, Saturday night. Yes, and we're not going to take on, you know, X Factor is yeah. going to come down. So there are parts of the year where I think we can do entertainment in yeah. our own way, and then there are parts of the year where we, we will provide an alternative. You know, we still really want our upmarket programming. We still love our history. We still love our acquisitions. Yeah. Um, so uh, we're always looking to provide an alternative. Um, but the truth is that you never have seven, you never have a full schedule. And you never have seven days a week that are all on fire. Because as mm. soon as you crack Monday, Thursday falls apart. And as soon as you've thought about Thursday, Wednesday falls apart. So we're always, always, always looking for new. We're always wanting the idea that can transform our fortunes or take us to the next, next level. Yeah. And even when the schedule is fairly full, things can be moved, things yeah. fall down. Even after budget round, um, you know, four, five, six, seven projects actually don't materialise because the access falls down or we yeah. couldn't work out how to make it or it didn't really stack up at the end of the day. So there's always room for new ideas. Yeah, so for to people in, the, in this room will have new ideas, but if you're, not, you're not averse to, to picking up old ideas as well. You know, Big Brother was originally on Channel 4. Yeah, it was, yeah. Um, uh, Blind Date was an ITV programme. Yeah, Blind, Michael Blind. Palin, Travelling the World is, a, you know, so these are reviving uh, good ideas or yeah. ideas that have lost their home somewhere else. They all have a point and purpose. Blind yeah. Date was, in it, it needed to be with Paul O'Grady. It needed to be a well-known show to bring people to Channel 5 because I think familiarity for our audience is very, very helpful. We could then build on that by using Gino, who's much less yeah. well-known, on a new show after him. Uh, Michael Palin is, of course, back trying to bring uh, a, a very upmarket audience to the channel. Um, Big Brother was a Richard Desmond commission yeah. in order to try and get 1634s on the channel and to tie up with all his magazines. So there's a point and purpose to every single programme that I, we do. I'm nervous about raising this next programme because you said you've, you've had enough of railways now, but you've got uh, uh, the great Great model railway challenge. Just as an well, I think this is another idea. another great idea that came out of a brainstorm with Knickerbocker Glory, where they play a game where you you choose a, a job that you wanted to do as a child and a famous face and a something else. You put them all in the hat and you pull out these things and you put things together. And we came up with the Great Model Railway Challenge. Yeah. I'd been looking for a competitive format on the sh on the schedule for quite some time, and I do think that when you look at the whole schedule, there are textures that I'm missing, and I think we're looking for a, I think we're missing a competitive format for nine o'clock. Yeah. This was commissioned for eight o'clock on Fridays. Yeah. It is obviously being railways, uh, maybe not obviously, but it is more skewed towards older men, which we would tend to play on a Friday up against the soaps on the other channel. No point in trying to do female against female. Um, and I, I really like the show. The only brief on this mm. was that it had to look and feel different to Bake Off and all the other competitive uh, yes. uh, shows out there. Um, it's a really sweet, creative, magical little show. So, so right. we've got to clever that. So we're competing over creating railways or running yes, railways. Yes, so each week the, the there, there are three teams, I think it is, and they're given a theme, television shows, and they have these huge uh, things in which to create models and little, the little railway goes round. So you see the journey that the railway goes on, and then the final, the challenge is to create this thing, thing and then they all have to join together. All right. To create this sort of monster railway. It's a bit like how our railways are run generally. It's they, a bit like how, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> slightly chaotic. Yeah, yes. yeah. Only perhaps it doesn't it, always work. <laughs> well, perhaps <laughs> it does work. Well, let's have, let's have a look. Maybe it works better than uh, real life railways. Brilliant. And These you can use those are... shots in your drama. <laughs> you can. <laughs> <laughs> See? Great idea. Let's get, it's going to work. Let's do it. Yeah. yeah. But that, I mean, that nothing is. A, get, nothing yeah. gets wasted on It's a bit side. off the wall as an idea. I mean, a little bit like whoever had the idea for Strictly Come Dancing all those years ago. You wouldn't say, oh, that's an obvious thing. But, that, but know, then it gets going. Look, this might it, be the new Strictly. Not, and it may not work, yeah. but there was something. It, look, I, I understood who the audience could be. I knew how I could play it. And I just felt that if you could make it broad enough and magical enough, you'd get an audience who didn't care specifically about. My, I'm not interested in model, model yeah. railways. But I'd watch that because of the magic that yeah. these people create. And the, you know what Seem I think? quite I'd, nice people. I'd, what I was yeah. going to say, yeah. I think what is a really important thing is people who are passionate. And I've, there are subjects I would watch, you know, you can watch pottery and you can watch people changing car tyres if they are passionate people. Great historians who are passionate can take you anywhere. And I think that the people in this programme are passionate and yeah. that makes it a very endearing programme. Now, you may say you've had enough of dogs, but you've got, well, well, I, you've I, got I quite a lot of... 
Yeah, I know you. I know you're a dog lover. Big dog lover. You're, 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 what's your dog? Is it? Is it I have a, two dogs. Yeah, Ginger I, and Parker. There was. I. I saw. This is right off the beam. But there's a, you've got a, something that's half half West half, 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 half West. How did that happen? Yes. That's, well, that's, uh, it was. Too, you must have given him a helping it, hand. It, it was the, the father was a very <laughs> determined Westie. Yes, they uh, are Westies, and, aren't they? And fell in love with the next door neighbour's retriever. Yeah, yeah. But he still needed a ladder. He still needed a ladder, didn't he? Well, I don't know. I, I, never, I never saw him. Maybe he was just like signed on by uh, God. <laughs> well, anyway, well endowed, uh, well endowed, nature, pro, nature programs. Nature programs, yeah. Because again, uh, uh, they are they they cut a quite of investment of time and, and energy to, to produce. Yeah. You know, a, a simple shot of a, yeah. uh, you know, uh, an animal killing another animal yes. that might take months and weeks. Is that are they expensive for your channel? Yes, that would be in the higher bracket for us. Yeah. But, uh, you know, and it's, it's interesting. It, it, this is a good example of how you stumble across something. We commissioned uh, 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 a year in Loch Lomond, uh, in, probably in my first year, actually, um, and we didn't really believe in it. Uh, I mean, it was a beautiful programme, don't get me wrong, you know, summer, autumn, winter, summer, whatever it is. Um, <laughs> but, we were, but we were nervous about playing it. Um, and sort of sat on the shelf and sat on the shelf and sat on the shelf. And then an opportunity came up. It's like, oh, you know what? Why don't we just play it? Because yeah. it's quite a good alternative. Yeah. Bring it down from the shelf, dust it off, you know, yes. put it out. And suddenly we think 1.6 million. You just go, whoa, OK, where else can we go? Where else yeah. can we do a year in? So that sort of strand has been very successful for us. Mm. And it's a bit like Parking Wars, which we've been playing in the last three weeks. You know, that was made about a year ago. You know, it's not the most exciting subject in the world. It has been done before. You could say it was a cynical commission. I don't think it would, I think it would be fair to say that nobody was like really enthusiastic about it because it was another parking yeah. program. But the, there are no other parking programs on the air at the moment. So just before Celebrity Big Brother, we said, let's play the three parking wars out and see if it works. And it really worked for us. And somebody goes, you know what? There's life in parking. We'll bring that back next year. <laughs> so part of our There's going to be a lot of copycat parking programs. Maybe parking is the new yeah, baking. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, Maybe, but we're lead, yeah, lead as yeah. you see. We're first off the tracks with Get parking presented by this parking. time around. Great. Uh, now, um, so look, we're, we're coming towards the end of our hour, but, uh, and I'm not suggesting we're coming to the end of you, but you have, you have achieved, you've got a BAFTA uh, yeah, this good, year. Got a and BAFTA, yeah, a first ever BAFTA. And first ever uh, Second channel, channel of the year. Second channel of the year. I think but, so you've time, achieved yeah. that under your guys. So yeah, wh what else can you achieve? Where, where else can you take the channel? What else do you want to do at uh, Channel 5? Well, there's two other channels of the year to be won. Mm. Uh, broadcast and the RTS. So yes. I think we should. I think we should remain being ambitious. Yes. Um, I, and I think it's quite interesting that we are now starting to be seriously recognised in terms of awards. And I'm very appreciative of that. And it means. Uh, it means. It does mean a lot to us. Can I just um, interject there? I'm uh, going to thank at some point. This is a good time to thank Broadcast Intelligence, who are the sponsors of this event. And I don't know if that will help. We're you. always thankful. That will help you with your uh, Channel of the Year competition with them. Broadcast. So that's. Uh, um, uh, but I think really, you know, what the, the, the challenge always comes from creativity. Yeah. And even when you, you think you've done it, and you think you're just like, OK, job done, move on. And then somebody walks into the room and says, have you thought about doing that on a Tuesday night? And you go, oh, here we go again. Yes. Just, I just can't resist. Yeah. So I think next year is going to be very much a year of there's a lot of new stuff coming in. A lot of three, four, six part series where we find the next wave of Channel 5. And I think it'll be a more grown up wave. I think we are halfway on the journey to where I would like us to be. It's been a fantastic five years, but I think there's more we can do. But do you prefer this sort of job to, like, you could have set up your own production company? I'd be richer. Big Ben Productions or I'm, something. Uh, yep. Uh, yep. Or, or, or title. I, I, and I'd be a lot richer, <laughs> but, I, but, I, but, I, but I can't take rejection. Yes. And the great thing about this job is that I, can't, I don't reject myself. Yeah. I always give myself yes. a commission. Yeah. <laughs> So, and that is the reason I stay in broadcasting. Right. I, think I'd be, I think I'd be awful in the independent. Now, now luckily, uh, we are up against it. So I've got some questions that people have kindly put through on the festival app. And uh, the first question, uh, it doesn't say who it comes from. It's a bit unfair not to acknowledge people. But if you weren't a channel controller, what would your dream job be? I think it would have to be with dogs. You would? I think I'd just have to do a dog rescue centre or something. Yeah, just, right. they make me so happy yes and and for a man who's slightly ocd and likes everything just so they're the one thing where i, I don't care how messy it is and i don't yes. care how much it swells. i just love dogs well there's a there's a four I mean, even yeah. people on this there was a homeless man on the street with a dog yesterday and i had to stop and i nearly cried and i thought oh my god how can i get some money shall i go into pret if I, what could i buy in pret to give the dog i just cared about the dog so much yes. and, uh, i mean i really yeah. I, I often go into Waitrose on the way home because there's a little Waitrose and I go and I buy dog food and I go out and I say, never mind the homeless person, this is for the dog. Um, yeah. 
And one of the things I'm most excited about this year is our big animal telethon in December, where we're devoting a whole night to raising money for animal welfare uh, across Britain. Mm. And to me, that is a passion project. I know Channel 4 have Stand Up to Cancer, and the BBC have Red, red Nose Days and stuff like that. Well, someone has to stand up for the yeah. animals. Yes. And yeah. rescue yeah. animals, because yeah. if you love them, they'll really love you back. Yeah. Well, they're pushing an open door, but I, I, yeah, go. I've got so, a dog which I got from a television program ten years ago. Oh, but uh, um, okay. so, but I, but you, well, you said so earlier I, on you're over uh, dog programs. No, it doesn't sound as though no, you're over. What I'm saying is there are too many dog programs on Channel Five. We don't need any more dog programs yeah. on Channel Five. I will never be over dogs themselves. Could you? You go into dogging, perhaps, as a different area. You could cover. Well, I'm not saying. Yeah. That. <laughs> I don't mean you personally. I no, 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 no. I no. mean. Yes, I, wouldn't, I, I, mean, I wouldn't call it dogging. No, no, I'd no. probably call it something else. Yeah, the title needs changing. Yeah. I don't know where you're going with that, but. Yeah. 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 Um, oh. <laughs> this is a strange word. Do you tint your eyebrows? They look great. Yes, I do. <laughs> well, I have no eyebrows. There's this fantastic thing. I have no eyebrows. It's like a, a, a family thing where your eyebrows fall out. There's this fantastic wand you can get in boots. It's about 36 pounds. Yes. They do one for eyelashes as well, which is a little brush. And you, it's like a clear gel, and you put it on your eyebrows, and your eyebrows grow back again. Yeah. This is like the biggest miracle of my life. It's like a whole yeah. new limb. So I have my eyebrows, yeah. which I meant to have tinted before I came, so I had to do them myself this morning with this little wand. Oh. But uh, yes, I do, because they're very fine, because well, of, of the... That's a very unusual thing. But most most what, of what, us... That not have eyebrows? No, but most of us... Uh, uh, well, a lot you of have us, good eyebrows. I have good, but that's only, that's the only place my hair grows. Right? Okay. In fact, no. in fact okay, what right. I want to do is to grow them and you know <laughs> comb them over backwards. But uh, <laughs> but uh, but barbers don't like that. So, oh, we're going to clip that off for you. But yeah. yeah anyway, let's not go into yeah. that. Yeah. Um, well, I, my, my, my commissioners and I, we, we talk a lot about facials yeah. and yeah. grooming and yeah. that kind of thing. I, 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 like, I like product. I, <laughs> We've got to come to some sort of climax here. Okay, okay. Uh, which <laughs> Following on from dogging, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Dogging and climbing. So, this, this is a good question. In all of uh, your five years at the channel, what are you most proud of? That sounds like a, that is an end question. Well, I'm, 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 I'm very proud of last night, obviously, because I think that is a really great achievement. But I think probably for me, the moment where I felt we'd finally broken through was Jane MacDonald winning the BAFTA, um, because that had never happened in Channel 5's history. And it, 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 was, it sort of came at an amazing time for me. I found it an incredibly moving night. I was, I was sort of overwhelmed by it um, for a programme that I passionately cared about, that I think is a really exceptional programme. And I think it embodies all the values of Channel 5. It is, it is fun, it is informative, it is inspiring, it is warm, it is friendly, it is self-deprecating, it is, it is sheer joy. Mm. And I think it, it, is, it is the programme that for me says, this is Channel 5. And I'm so thrilled that the industry, who I feel sometimes, you know, maybe don't give us the credit that we are due, uh, mm. recognise that in that programme. And, and winning that battle was, a, it, it was like we broke through something. It's like, at now, people are looking at us in a different way at last. You I can think. hold your head high. You can look in. Well, I always hold my eye. head high. I'm always yeah. very proud of the channel. I've yes. never looked down on Channel 5. I've yeah. always believed in it. I love being the underdog. I'm really proud of the team and what we do. I think we, I think we punch way above our weight with our budgets and our scale and our, our, our team, which is quite a small team. Um, so I've never looked down on Channel 5. I just wish that other people would look up at us a little bit more. Now, I would have liked to have had more time to go over your career. I think you've done that in, in previous years. It's a meteoric rise. For one minute, you're, um, I think, dressed. Watching Richard yes. and Judy, yeah. and, but it seems like five years later you were a yeah. uh, senior producer, yeah. and then and then yeah. up you went up. You've yeah. gone the the ladder of getting yeah. more and more power, more yeah. and more control. Yeah. Well, we thought we'd finish on uh, uh, just oh. uh, we found something. We dig, dug up something from uh, the Ben Fro. Um, Ben Frau family archive, and if you think singing in Jane McDonald's cruising show was breaking the mould, you know I don't know if you know what's coming, but uh, sure check coming. this out. Check this out. <laughs> I, I have to explain. Yeah, yeah, yeah God. Well, so when I when I was when I was uh, when I was out this morning looking after Richard and Judy's uh, clothes and stuff, uh, we would do a little strand in the summer. They, they, they for free. Yeah. And they gave me £38,000 to make a series on cooking for one. It was for sort of old people and single people. And I was just given this money and, and told to go away and make a series of eight episodes or something like that. And me and my friend Neil decided, decided to write a drama <laughs> where each episode had a theme, pasta, salad, whatever it is. I played a single man in my little flat 
who dreamed about being a, a, a television chef. Mm. And I'd go into these dream sequences where I was the chef. And then the set, we built a set in Granada. Yeah. We, had, we had dancers from Accrington and choreographers coming in. And the set would split. Yeah. And then we'd go into this dance sequence. Yes. And it was only about three or four weeks ago where I suddenly remembered this and thought, goodness me, I thought I was really original by putting a song at the end of Jane, mm. but I'd done it before. <laughs> there are no new ideas. Yes, well, You should scour yeah, those iCarbs for the old ideas and see what we can revive. I think what we've learned from that... And take, take I had good hair then, didn't Yes, I? you did. Oh, I had a lot uh, of hair. <laughs> but, uh, uh, Ben Fry, you're clearly wasted as, as some uh, director uh, of programmes. You should, should be, be on screen. screen, you should be on stage, yes, all good. singing, all dancing. Thank kind. you very much for taking Thank part of this. Much. Thank you all of you for asking your questions and Broadcast Intelligence for sponsoring the event. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Okay.